Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm Ashley, and we are Tiny Shiny Home. Our family is building an off-grid desert homestead from the ground up here in Cochise County, Arizona. When we moved onto this raw land over two years ago, all we had was our renovated vintage Airstream that we had been traveling in for the last five years. We parked it right in the middle of the parcel and got to work building. First was a fence to keep the cows out, then water storage and a solar powered water pump. Then it was our earth bag solar shed office, off grid solar system, and an earth bag chicken garden. We are so ready to start on our house, but there's a problem. The Airstream is in the way. That's right, it's time to finally build a permanent resting place for our tiny shiny home. She's carted us over 100,000 miles all over the US and Canada and has been a true home for our family of six for the last five years. So it can't just be any pole barn. We need to protect this piece of history for years to come. We had some requirements, Yes. so let's talk about them. The first was open frame design. Right, we didn't want to build like a garage with four walls and pull it in. We came out here for the views, so yep. we want to continue seeing the views because we are living in this full time while we build our homestead. Yeah, and it has all these big, beautiful windows on it, and we want to be able to look out those windows and see this amazing property. It also needs to double as an outdoor living space. We mm. don't want to just pull in the Airstream and like have nowhere else to go when we come out of the Airstream. Yeah, any covered space we can build here in the desert is a big deal. Yeah, shade is key to living out here in the desert. This is a big one. It needs to withstand 100 plus mile an hour winds. It's true. We live in the high desert of Arizona and we have a windy season and it gets crazy. Also, we have monsoon season and that's even worse. Those are the dangerous ones. It's There's these updrafts that come out of nowhere, these microbursts, and they can reach over 100 miles an hour. Yeah. So if we're building something that's open, it's basically just a big wind sail, we need to make sure it's engineered to handle that kind of weather. Now because of our open frame requirements, we did a lot of research and we kind of came to the conclusion that building something with metal is probably the best way to go here. Not We don't want to make like a pole barn out of wood, it's not going to last very long in the desert. So we're really looking for strength and durability long term. We also need to utilize this roof to catch water because we want to eventually live off of rainwater catchment. Yeah, water tables are dropping here in the high desert and wells aren't a great investment. So long term, any roof that we get, we want to catch water off of it. A big part of our goals in coming to live off grid out here is to be as sustainable as possible. So up to this point, we've built a lot of earth bag buildings using just a lot of natural materials on the property. But as we move into this type of building where we're sort of bringing materials in, we want to make sure that those are still ethically and sustainably sourced. And finally, we want to be able to put this building together ourselves. A huge part of being out here and homesteading is learning and figuring out how to do things ourselves. Yeah, ideally we could find a company that would work alongside us to help design it, but then sort of give us the pieces and let us do it ourselves. Are we control freaks? Maybe. <laughs> Now we know these requirements are a lot, but like any good homesteader, we do our research. That's right. We watched video after video, scoured blog after blog, visited places locally, and finally, oh, I gotta fly right on my hat. <laughs> and we finally settled on a company called Miracle Trust after helping put together one of their buildings here locally. Miracle Trust certainly ticked off all of our boxes and a few extras. Their buildings are American made from recycled steel, they come with a 50-year warranty. Their clear span design allows for usable space all the way to the peak. Miracle Trust is used in hurricane zones as well as massive snow load areas like Alaska. 
The main metal pieces are built like bridges for incredible strength, but they do use minimal standard lumber for flexibility and cost savings. They should be easy to put together ourselves by renting just a few pieces of heavy equipment. And they provide fully engineered drawings for permitting, cement pad pours, and anchor bolt plans to help with out-to-out -out dimensions and truss locations. Let's just say that we were impressed. So we reached out to Miracle Truss and told them what we wanted to do. They helped us design the perfect Airstream cover that was tall enough to pull the Airstream in but still get access to the roof and also have a nice living space to the front of it. The process was very easy and straightforward, and we appreciated their expertise that they brought asking the right questions and making sure we are designing this right. We'll dig into the full cost of this project near the end, but if you've been following us for a while, you know that while we like to save money and do things cheaply, we also only like to do them once. A building like this can cost more up front, but we feel like it's a great investment for our homestead. We could always turn this into something else later on down the road. They're very flexible. Now, we wanted to make sure you know that while Miracle Trust isn't technically sponsoring this project, we are working together. We're going to create some marketing materials for them that will help offset the cost of the building for us a little bit. Yes, but otherwise, all of the other expenses are coming directly out of our pocket yep. for the cement pad pour, the wood for the trusses. We're rerunning electrical. Water catchment so many things this is definitely the biggest project we have done on the homestead <laughs> flies are driving me crazy also we do have an affiliate relationship with them so if you get to the end of the series and you're like cool i want a miracle trust building and you call them up and you say we sent you then we will get a small commission we're going to be taking you through the entire process step by step so you can see if this build is right for you ready let's get started Like we mentioned, the design process was pretty straightforward. Other than our basic list of requirements, we just had a few other things we were trying to keep in mind. So far on the homestead, we have only built a single pitch shed style roof. We really like the way that it looks mm -hmm. and the way that it functions, but... We really need to <laughs> utilize as much shade as possible on this build, so we're going to go with the gable style roof. Yeah, we've been in the Airstream on this property. We've been in the Airstream on this property for two and a half years. <laughs> We've been living in the Airstream on this property for two and a half years, completely just exposed to the elements. Yeah. And we have learned quickly that as the sun comes up in the morning, we need to put the awning out to help shade that side of the Airstream. But once it gets up over, all bets are off and it gets real hot. So we wanna make sure as the sun comes up and goes over, we're providing as much shade as possible for as long as possible. And we think a gabled roof will help with that. We also really want to make sure that during this design, we can access the top of our Airstream roof because our air conditioner is on its last leg. We want to be able to replace vents or air conditioners or internet antennas or whatever we Clean need to do. Nest. Yeah, whatever we need to do, we need to make sure we have access. So a lot of our conversations really centered around getting at the right height, but also we didn't want to build something too tall because again, we love the beautiful views out here and we don't want to make something stupid that's going to block everything. So a lot of those conversations went back and forth about how much... How low could we go? How low could we go? <laughs> where we park the Airstream in relation to the peak and how high the corners are on the inside versus the outside. They were very patient with us. In our case, we ended up going with a 12-foot vertical truss on the outside which gives us 11 foot of clearance on the inside. Right, the Airstream is about 10 and a half feet tall at its tallest point, and we weren't gonna like smash it right up against the side. It's gonna be in a little bit, but should work out perfectly, especially with that clear span design. As far as the pitch of the roof goes, we didn't wanna go too steep, so we did a 312 pitch, which makes us about 14 feet tall at the peak, which is reasonable. Yeah. I think that works out good. Mm -hmm. Uh, other than that, we also just spent a lot of time trying to decide how much additional living space we wanted 
besides the Airstream. Ideally, I would have liked to have like this massive <laughs> cement pad, but then we figured out the cost of that cement pad. <laughs> and the building. Uh, yeah, when yeah. you add more square footage, it all goes up. All I have to say, we settled on a 19 foot by 36 foot pad, and that will give us about eight feet of livable space. Yeah. So I think it'll work out good. Miracle Trust was super patient and helpful with us trying to figure out the size and the design of this building. Yeah, and once we settled on that and on the cost and everything, then they sent us technical drawings that also needed to be approved. These buildings are super cool because we can put them together ourselves. And for those of you who know us, we like doing things ourselves. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's simple. No, there are a lot of things to think about as you go down this road. And so we're going to talk about sort of the high level pieces of putting together a building like this. First, let's talk about the foundation. Yeah, one of the cool things about a metal truss design is that you can do it a few different ways. You could just pour footers for them to bolt into, or you could do a full cement pad. Since or we're you could do columns. Columns. But since we're you know, parking our Airstream on this, a full cement pad kind of made the most sense for us. Now, while we have poured a few small cement pads ourselves, this is out of the question. This is a whole other level. It is massive. So we will be reaching out to a local cement company to help us pour this pad because there are so many more steps in something this large, right? Right. It is an open air building. So the footers really need to be beefed up. And this is just something that we aren't comfortable with doing what ourselves. The equipment, yeah. Also... We are in the desert, right? And so things do sink. And so they'll need to bring in additional material, compact it down. They're going to have to set the bolts for the trusses to go into. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. It's a whole thing that we, like I said, we're just not comfortable doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to say we need help with it. And we're going to show you all the details of that in the next video. But otherwise, you also need some equipment to put this metal truss building up. Yeah. And have we ever used heavy equipment? No, not really. No. No, nope. lots of lots of first on this project. So we're also going to need to coordinate renting a telehandler and a scissor lift for varying amounts of time after the pad is poured and like we have to schedule all this stuff and figure it out. Compared to most of the other projects that we've done here on our homestead where we're building with our soil, this is a whole new ball game and we are learning so much. One of the things that we completely forgot about was getting a permit. Yeah, so with our solar shed, it was under 200 square feet, so we didn't need a permit for it. With the earthbag chicken garden, it's basically just a wall, so mm -hmm. it doesn't really count. But anything in Cochise County, even with the opt-out, that is over 200 square feet and costs more than $1,000, does need a permit. The permit process was actually pretty simple. We just called the county and asked for some direction and then they sent us to the application online. Yeah, everything is online now. Now this was considered an accessory structure, right? And we were also able to opt out of inspections on this building because we are part of the owner builder opt out. We did have to send a site plan in and show them that we were uh, at least 20 feet from our property line and we even sent in the engineer drawings, but we really didn't need it for the opt-out because they weren't going to do any inspections. All in all, the permit only cost us about $150 and was approved in just a couple days. They just came out for the initial inspection and make sure we are set back from the fence the proper distance. We should be able to just text or email the photos of the completed building when we're finished and close out that permit. Now that our building's on order and our cement pad is ready to be poured and our permits in hand, we are ready to get started. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Like we said, it's 2022 <sighs> and we're going to run into all sorts of issues like cement rations and high gas prices slowing down shipping times. 
and just general unavailability of materials and the equipment that we need to rent. Things are definitely going to happen. <laughs> we just don't know when they're going to happen. But all that is a story for another video. Now, speaking of future videos, this project is a lot more than just a truss building and a cement pad. And an airstream pulled yeah. on. We have to run electric. We have to harvest water. We've got to catch all that water and store it. We need to build another solar pump house to pressurize that water to put it into the airstream. We've got to make a livable space in front of the air. Guys, this is a big, pro it's, like you said, it's the biggest project that we've ever done. But this is also one project that we have to get done this year <laughs> because we need to start building our house. That's right, the airstream is right in the way. It's right where the house is gonna go. We can't start on it to get the airstream moved. We cannot wait to get our tiny shiny home covered and protected from the elements. We hope that you'll continue watching as this crazy project unfolds and we'll see you soon.